Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. And when I don't, it's more like, do you ever get distracted? I mean, really, does something distract you from things that you know you ought to do or you should do, and you decide to follow up on them, and then by the time you try to get back to what it is that you thought you were supposed to do in the first place, it's so involved that you can't seem to make it back. It's like fighting a headwind, that once you've sailed past it, it just isn't that easy to get back to the safe harbor entrance that maybe you should tack around and have to get back to. My days are a lot like that, is that I have choices to make, that sometimes I get distracted, and it's almost as though God always has his hand on me to possibly, you know, maybe take an easier way, and then I get distracted, and then he has to kind of bring me back, and it always gets accomplished, but I know that I'm not always yielding to the easiest or the most convenient way that God would direct me, even though I read my devotionals, you know. And I try to read my word, you know. <laughs> okay, maybe we should do a Bible study with, you know, recording it so you can prove that I'm doing my Bible studies every day. But the reality is, is that sometimes I just don't get to it. And maybe I'm not as prepared as I would like to be for the day. So to prepare and to be aware with devotionals, Follow God's priorities. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> That's simple. The sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice, and I know them and they follow me. John 10, 27. Many people try to feel spiritual by obeying religious laws, but they never get around to feeling good because there's always one more law to follow. <laughs> that is why God does not define our righteousness by our works. Thank God but by our faith in Jesus. We feel inner peace when we obey the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking inside us the words that Jesus said. God may tell you that it is more important to give away your favorite personal possession than to try to please him by reading the Bible through in a year. That can happen. He may say that it is more important to just remain silent if he tells you to than to volunteer for every activity at church. That could happen. His ways are not our ways, neither are his thoughts our thoughts. So learn to listen for his direction each day. You know, and as you go your way, I mean, I always said that the Bible can be summed up in one scripture. Really. I mean, to me it is, but, you know, maybe you'll disagree. But in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it makes an interesting statement that if you really take it for what it says, it to me, sums up the entire Word of God from beginning to end. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. To me, if you're trusting in the Lord, he's going to direct you to salvation. He's going to direct you to finding the words of Jesus, discovering the person of Jesus, and listening to Jesus as he says, you must be born again. And in so doing, you follow the process that God says to become born again, that you're no longer living after what you hear from the world and its ways, but you begin to understand that there's something different about what Jesus said and what you're doing because you trust in the Lord. And so I always thought that was a pretty simple way to go. Just trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, lean not in thine own understanding. In all the ways acknowledge him and he direct your path. And then I take it to my everyday life, and I think, well, did I trust in the Lord, you know, or did I lean on my own understanding, or did I acknowledge him in what I was doing before I got distracted? Nope. <laughs> I went off my tangent, didn't care what he had to say, just choom, went running off, and sure enough, choom, came running back. <laughs> because you find that there's lots of distractions, and there's lots of things that you can do, like was mentioned, you can join every religious organization there is in the world, you can be torn with your heart and your mind and your soul to cry out for the starving and the millions that are dying, do all those things, but the question would be when you get to heaven, 
Will Jesus ask you, did I ask you to? In other words, it's easy to think you know what God said, but you can't say to me, God said it, if you're just reading it. Because that's just believing it. Now, if God tells you to do something, that you should do. So you learn by reading the Bible and programming your mind to be able to understand who God is, what he is, how he operates, why he operates a certain way, what he might say to you, and then what he does say to you. And then as you do, you'll find that he begins to work through you to others, but at the same time, he begins to speak to you about you. And inside of you, you'll hear a still small voice begin to wallow up beneath the programming that you've had from the world. Your conscience will begin to be your guide. And then as it does, it'll become louder and more insistent upon doing those things that you saw in Scripture. And as you see yourself conforming to those things that you saw in Scripture and your conscience is guiding you, you'll find that that Holy Spirit of directing you in circumstance will suddenly become an audible voice. And as it does, you'll know who Jesus is. Because <laughs> guess what? He's talking to you. The question will be, will you do what he says? And that's my question every day. He's talking to me, but will I do what he says? <laughs> I hope you do. I ain't going the long way around. Maybe you'll take the shortcut.